Dale, I have a responsibility to you and your family tonight, and that's to do the best I can do to tell people why you deserve, deserve to be honored here. Someone asked me when did I first meet Dale. I don't remember. I was chairman for 35 years of an event called Oshkosh, Air Venture Oshkosh in the neighboring state of Wisconsin. We are green and gold over there, not purple, but please accept me for that. And I met Dale and his brother there when they came to the event to just learn more about airplanes. And they started building a kit called the VK-30. And you saw the picture of Dale and his brother, Alan, two young men, long hair, fresh-eyed, excited, with a vision. And they talked over with their family and their parents and learned that building kid airplanes was not going to get them where they wanted to be in terms of making an impact on aviation. So they decided to certify an airplane. And if any of you know anything about aviation, certifying an airplane is one of the most difficult things to do in the world because you're dealing with our government, you're dealing with time and money, that it becomes almost limitless. Certification costs millions of dollars and takes thousands of hours. But they took the risk. Two brothers from Baraboo, Wisconsin. They moved the operation to Duluth, Minnesota. In 1999, they delivered their first airplane, 16 years ago. Yesterday, they delivered their 6,000th airplane in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. 6,000 airplanes. In an industry that's been up and down, an industry where new aircraft design is an anomaly, an industry that has a mentality that is decades old from what it should be to be innovative, fresh, and new. Think about this. Four years ago, approximately, Cirrus is bought by a Chinese company, Kega. As you can appreciate, there's significant cultural differences between the Chinese and Duluth, Minnesota. They're owned by a company that business processes are much different. And they bought Cirrus without a vision or a strategy. The only thing they want to do is become a global leader in aviation. The CEO at the time was released, and they asked Dale to assume CEO of Cirrus in September of 2011. He'd never been a CEO before. He took over a company that was near bankruptcy, significant debt, new owners, and a short order book. Quite a challenge. Less than four years later, they've been profitable for the last two or three years, have sold over 300 airplanes, are introducing a jet, and the revenues will grow from 150 million four years ago to almost half a billion dollars in within the next year or two. It's quite an accomplishment for a young man that's never been a CEO, but who's a passionate, innovator, and I would define Dale Klopmeyer not as a manager, not as an executive, not as a founder, he's a leader. And leaders lead by motivating others to get the job done. They set direction, they establish accountability, and they encourage people to do the best that they can do. Duluth, Minnesota is not known as an aviation town. Not like Wichita, Seattle, and others. So they built their workforce with people who are dedicated and passionate, as Dale talked about, Midwestern values. They developed the skills necessary to build a first-class airplane. I would describe the Cirrus aircraft, line of aircraft, by the three S's, style, safety, and speed. Those are anomalies. Usually speed doesn't lead to safety, and style can be very difficult in an airplane where you have to have certification and regulations. But they've incorporated all of it. Dale and his team designed an airplane that was appealing to the customer, keeping the customer in mind. He developed one, designed one that has speed and safety, the airplane with a parachute. A gentleman walked up to me yesterday at the Cirrus exhibit and said, my wife will only let me buy an airplane that has a parachute. You know, there's only one airplane that has a parachute? The Cirrus. Last year, Cirrus had almost 5,500 airplanes in the field, 5,500, only three accidents. An all-time record for them at the highest level of airplanes, 
flying today. They have become the leader in the general aviation field, owning 48 percent of the market. How did all that happen? Number one, Dale has an innate sense for what the customer wants. He just reorganized his company. He established two presidents. One president is in charge of customer experience. Pretty unusual title. But what it says is the customer is the most important thing that we have. We want to be sure they not only get the best products, but are totally engaged in what he calls serious life. Yesterday, or the last two days, we were in Oshkosh together. On Sunday night, he had a reception for Cirrus aircraft owners and friends. Almost 1,200 people attended, including Cirrus owners such as Ken Griffey Jr., the coach of the Dallas Mavericks, Rick Carlisle, and a concert by Cirrus owner Dirk Bentley. Complimentary to all of the people there. Last night, Dirks and Sears presented a concert to the people of Oshkosh, 20,000 people strong. That's customer engagement. That's customer experience. You know, when people are buying an airplane, many would say, I'm buying it for transportation. But more importantly, it's a family expenditure with discretionary time and money. So engaging the family is extremely important. So I'm very proud to introduce to you tonight Dale Klapmeyer, a leader, a visionary, but most importantly, a person who speaks from the heart with passion and dedication, and it's the respect that he has from his customers and his staff and his employees is why he has been successful in leading a company in an industry that has not been as creative as it should be. And he's becoming a leader, and Minnesota should be very proud that aviation is alive and well in Duluth, Minnesota. At this time, please welcome Dale Klapmeyer as your next inductee. And as Dale walks up here, I was one thing I wanted to not forget. In addition to a businessman, he's a philanthropist supporting organizations such as Airspace Minnesota and Angel Flight. Thank you, Dale. Well, thank you very much. It is a a tremendous honor to be here. I'm honored to be introduced by Tom Poberesny, a person who's a mentor, and probably more importantly, uh, a friend, close friend. He and I, my wife and uh, my youngest son, flew back here from Oshkosh today. There's a, a little event going on in this small town over in Wisconsin called uh, EAA Air Venture, and there's about a half a million people there to celebrate aviation this week. It's a, an incredibly exciting time to be over there and an incredibly exciting night to be here. And I'm very, very honored to be here tonight. I'm here with uh, my family, my wife of 30 years, my youngest son is here, my parents, my cousin, my uncle is also here. And people do always ask, you know, who were my mentors? Who did I look up to? Well, certainly I have my, my dad, Larry, my uncle, Jim, two very, very successful businessmen through their, their careers. A couple of things have always stuck with myself and my brother, a couple of sayings that my dad always told us. You know, the first was when we got started. We started the company right after I graduated from college. At that time, I was 23 years old, had a piece of paper from a school that said I was very smart. Therefore, I thought I knew everything. What, what a perfect time to start a company. But actually, my parents were very supportive. They literally said, you have nothing now, so you have nothing to lose. Why not? <clears throat> it's a great way to start. But they also said, don't ever do anything for the money. Do what you love and do it the best, and the money will come. And that's how we ran the business. We didn't do it for the money. We were incredibly passionate about aviation. We think about aviation every day. We think about airplanes. And more importantly, we think about how people use airplanes. And it's, aviation is so much more than the product on airplane. It's everything 
that is around that product. And what the airplane does is bring people together. It brought four of us from Oshkosh, Wisconsin over here today, and it'll return us back there first thing in the morning. But it's about bringing people together. That's what this industry is all about. The other question that I always get asked, and it was touched on in uh, the video, why Duluth, Minnesota? We started in a barn in southern Wisconsin and we moved the company to Duluth, Minnesota 20 years ago. We certainly didn't move there for the weather, nor did we move there for the tax environment in Minnesota. We moved there because of the people. There is a quality of people in the northern states, in, in Minnesota and in northern Minnesota. And we learned very, very quickly that it's not what we can do, it's what the people around us can do. So moving to Duluth, when we first visited there, we had a sense and a feel about the people that are there. And we felt that's where we could find the talent and the passion and the people that could actually help us fulfill a dream. Our job was to inspire that dream to others and then for them to help us fulfill it. And that's what we found in Duluth, Minnesota. Tremendous people, incredibly hardworking, innovative, and passionate. And from that, we've had uh, very, very good success the last, the last few years. In a very exciting time. And I am incredibly proud to be up here accepting this award. I'm truly honored and happy to be in front of all of you. Thank you very much. Well done, Dale. That's really cool. Congratulations. Yours to take.